Hey guys, it's Denise here, Nola Collectibles, and welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to do the best thrifted finds of the year. And so uh, I think this might be my third time doing this. And basically it's just a roundup of all the great finds that I've sourced throughout the year. I know I'm a little bit late doing this. I took a little bit of a sabbatical during the holidays and whatnot. Um, but I always find that this is a fun video to make and also share with you because we're all in this for the thrill of the hunt, aren't we? And so it's always fun to share kind of like what the most spectacular finds are with you guys. And so uh, I'm going to get right into it, but you know what to do. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise, Nola Collectibles. I'm a part-time reseller. I sell primarily on eBay, where my store name there is also Nola Collectibles. I am also a jewelry collector, a jewelry enthusiast. I've been doing this, um, doing this for many years, but loving jewelry for even longer. So this is my passion, and it's nice that I was able to parlay this basically into a hobby. So or a side hustle, depending on who you ask. So without further ado, let's get into some of this. And I think I'm gonna start, I'm gonna push some of these lovelies aside. I'm gonna start with this piece right here. And so uh, this piece right here, this is Italian. This is actually Venetian glass, hand-blown glass. And um, this was made, this style was made very popular by a glass maker named Archimedes Seguso. And Archimedes Seguso lived in Murano and he was very famous, very well known for his glass creations. So uh, just like many of the makers in Murano, he created vases and sculptures and all of that beautiful, fine Italian Venetian glass. He also was commissioned by Chanel um, to make these this st style of jewelry right here. So, you know, it looks kind of like a nautical kind of link here. These are all handmade, hand blown, and you can see they're linked here together. And so um, when you turn them sideways, they look like sh C's for Chanel. And so there was uh, some debate about Archimedes Samuso, Seguso and um, him making, being commissioned for Chanel and whether that that's actually really truly attributable or if that was some kind of like people just copying, pasting listings and, and saying that um, it was for Chanel. I'm a member of a Murano group on Facebook. I always talk about Facebook groups. I think they're a huge kind of valuable resource for us resellers because if you don't have expertise in a particular category, there is a group for it and you can go and join and it's free and you find out tons of information from people who are like die hard collectors. Um, so I did go onto the Murano group and I put this forward. And if you guys want to know, I was like, people were like, mm, not really sure about that. You know, we do vases, blah, blah, blah. Some woman there was like, hey, Archimedes' grandson, I know him. He comes on this board. Let me tag him. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so she tagged him and he did actually confirm that, yes, Archimedes Agusa was commissioned by Chanel to make this style of jewelry. Um, he did also say, though, however, his grandfather's pieces were signed. So you will see an AS for Archimedes Agusa if they are the ones that are directly attributed to him. So um, like anything else of that time and error, you know, once... A big well-known designer makes some something then you're going to kind of see lots of people replicate that look um, however um, we were talking about 1960s here for this jewelry I pulled this out of a jewelry bag out of my local thrift store I cannot believe that this item survived that this is hand blown glass and it was in a jewelry bag um, <laughs> and this was also a bucket list item for me because I think this is uh, very chic it's long 30 inches beautiful hand-blown glass just super super chic like I said it's got like a little bit of a nautical vibe to it I love that this particular one is white um, when you see these types of necklaces they often come in different variations so either sometimes you'll see them pearlized glass or you will see them in red and green or navy and red just stunning pieces of jewelry here and these guys uh, you know some of the ones that are not with a signature people do keyword spam saying they are Archimedes Sagusa so we see these sell anywhere between $500 to $1,800. And so, like I said, very beautiful. I really love this gorgeous necklace. I'm unsure of what I want to do with it. <laughs> you know me, I tend to hold on to things and hoard a little bit um, or enjoy them, I should say. I shouldn't say hoard. Enjoy the jewelry uh, before I decide really what I want to do with it. Because, like I said, this is a bit of a bucket list item for me. So that's beautiful. I was really so thrilled to find that. I just found that not too long ago and it was in a jewelry bag the jewelry bag was 49 dollars, 
and uh, that was definitely the best thing that came out of that jewelry bag. Um, I'll go right here, and uh, this one you might have seen in one of my thrift along videos with me, my husband and I. We just took like a little like road trip into Mississippi, and we hit a few kind of close by towns in Mississippi, and um, we went to a couple of antique stores and everything. And so this, uh, I did make a, a video when I found this. It was fifteen dollars, and it was just like hanging there. And I'm like, you know what? This is like such a cool looking necklace. I just thought it was different and I kind of like the Asian motif to it and it's so silly because like my husband's in graphic design so he tends to see letters and logos and things a lot quicker than I do um so he was he said to me when we were in the car he goes oh what is that Givenchy and I thought he was joking like I'm like yeah it's Givenchy and then he's like no there's like G's there and you know what he was actually right um, so this is a, a vintage Givenchy designer piece. This came in this kind of blue, beautiful blue color. It also came in white. Uh, I think this is just really, like I said, very, really very stunning. It happens to be a, a very rare piece as well. And uh, something like this I've seen going for between five and $800 uh, on sites like Ruby Lean and some of those uh, first dibs, some of those like higher end jewelry sites. So this was a wonderful find just to go randomly into some antique stores in Mississippi and <laughs> find a Givenchy necklace. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad that I ended up picking up that and I really do think it's a pretty spectacular piece of uh, costume, vintage designer costume jewelry. And this I have worn out. I have taken it for spin, gone out to dinner wearing it and whatnot. I think it's a, a really fabulous piece. I really do enjoy it. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go this little dude right here. Um, last year during my top thrifted finds of the year video, I actually featured uh, this ring here, this Bohemian Garnet ring in 14 karat gold. This actually came out of, of a shop Goodwill lot, and there's two Bohemian Garnet rings, and they both had stones missing from them. But this one had only two stones missing from it. So I told my jeweler to kind of harvest from one ring to. Um, fill the other one and he did that and it just came absolutely perfect so uh, I'm super excited about that it's just it's such a beautiful ring I love bohemian garnets and so I'm happy to be able to enjoy that and then this is just a little sterling silver um, ring here uh, uh, I mean ring bracelet with all kinds of uh, semi-precious stones amethyst peridot citro citrine all that good stuff I found that um, in a jewelry bag as well very recently and that one's currently listed uh, but I am enjoying it. <laughs> it's going to be hard to let that go. <laughs> um, I am enjoying it. So this one came from, uh, we have a little antique store here in New Orleans. Uh, it's on River Road and it's called, oh my God, where is it called? I think it's just called River Road Antiques or River Road Flea Market. It's this great little vintage and antique mall. It's dusty. It's like smells like antiques it's just one of those like great little places and i have a couple of vendors there that i really enjoy going to and i have picked up items from this vendor in the past and what i love about her booth she puts everything on sale for 50 percent off pretty frequently so but as if you know this wasn't look she had it marked for ten dollars so it was five dollars and you know when i go out hunting and whatnot i bring my loop um, I bring my magnet. The loop specifically is very important because there is a tiny, tiny little hallmark on there. It's super small. Let's see if you can see it. Maybe she didn't see it either, but it says um, Christian Dior by Kramer. So Christian Dior uh, commissioned Kramer very early on in 1950s. We're talking 1951. Let's focus back up. Uh, according to Women's Wear Daily, uh, Christian, this occurred in 1951. So we're talking about that this is a piece of jewelry now that's over 70 years old and they're exceptionally rare. And it's also, you're looking at it, you're kind of probably thinking like, what the hell is that? It's odd looking, right? It's um, poured glass. So it's this pour, hand poured glass um, technique here. Again, very, very rare. And, and they did make a bracelet that matched this. I've seen this in a blue iteration and this, haven't seen this pink iteration, so that makes me very excited. But yeah, again, very, very rare to come across this jewelry today just because of its age. And um, it's an excellent, excellent condition. And you know what? Look at the way that this held up. The back looks spectacular. 
likely rhodium plated, which is what always gives it that ultra shiny look. Um, also very high end, typical of high end jewelry designers, right? So if years and years later, you're gonna see that the, these pieces still look beautiful. So really excited to have picked up that one. $5 at just my random little antique mall over here um, in New Orleans. Let's keep going. I'm trying to figure out where to go. Where should we go next? I'm gonna leave this turquoise over there and tell you that we will get to it eventually, but um, I'm gonna go right here. And this one came out of a Shop Goodwill lot, uh, not maybe like a few months ago. I was very, very excited for this. Uh, it was sitting on top of the bag when I got it. Uh, I'm like, hmm, that looks like something that looks genuine to me. And uh, this is a, about a carat and a half of beautiful diamonds set in 14 karat gold. And what I do like about this, it does, you can tell it has a very kind of mid-century modern aesthetic to it. It does to me look like a custom piece. Uh, this is what the back looks like. It is two-tone white and yellow gold. It has um, a bail with a safety clasp on the end so that you can hang it like a pendant and wear it like that on your necklace, which I think is lovely and makes it very, very versatile. I love it. it like I said, very mid-century modern kind of aesthetic to it. Um, you, when you think about mid-century modern, you know those wall hangings that they would make? This reminds me of one of those. But the, the, the diamonds are beautiful, high quality, very clean. And um, again, to wear it as a brooch, it's a very well constructed. So uh, we have about a carat and a half of diamonds set in 14 karat gold brooch pin and brooch pin pendant. And this came out of a shop Goodwill will lot. So a, a fantastic piece of jewelry that I was thrilled to find um, from a bag that came from shop Goodwill. So should we do more gold? Because we're here. Why not? Right. Let's do this. And uh, actually yesterday, another bag of jewelry from Shop Goodwill and in there was this absolutely stunning uh, Italian made gold, 14 karat gold chain. And this one is marked 14 karat and Italy. And it's a, a very fancy link chain. It looks like it could be handmade because there's some variation there, but um, really beautiful just tangled up in some other necklaces and so this um, it's got a fabulous big box clasp on it it's got a safety catch on it and I weighed this and it's uh, 26 grams so 26 grams of gold uh, which is by today's price of gold when you know the price of gold fluctuates on a daily basis um, based on today's price is approximately I think just over $800 in gold value that's scrap value uh, so if you were to sell this at retail, a good practice would be to double that. So 1600 probably between 16 and $1,800 um, just for this. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful, heavy, well-made Italian gold link necklace. Absolutely gorgeous. And I don't, you know, I didn't measure the length on this. This is um, hmm, hmm, maybe 24 inches or so. I have to see, I have to measure it. I didn't get to that portion of the evening yet, folks. Um, anyway, I hope you all had a fabulous Christmas and um, great times with your family. And I, you know, it's like kind of like a COVID Christmas this year. Like so many people that I know, inclusive of my family, kind of got COVID this year. It, it you know, like Christmas was kind of canceled. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know we're just going day by day here folks we never know what's gonna happen next uh, but thankfully you know everyone's doing okay and we're you know we're kind of all moving on with life in some way <laughs> but I hope you had a good Christmas and a great New Year's um I'm gonna go here to Bakelite and uh, Bakelite we know is um, from the Art Deco period which most people don't realize when you think of Art Deco, you think of white gold and sapphires and rubies and, you know, um, elaborate settings and whatnot. But uh, yes, Bakelite also was from that Art Deco era. And, uh, you know, Bakelite was an early form of plastic and it was invented by Leo Bakeland um, and eventually used for jewelry. And when you're wanting to pick up, what I love about Bakelite is that people assume that this is just plastic. And yes, it is plastic, but it's valuable plastic. <laughs> Um, so this is like just the hugest chunky monkey, huge, wide, with almost like a honeycomb kind of look to it. And um, we call this like, a, I would say this is like a butterscotch. Um, all Bakelite is named after food. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of yummy looking. I've also actually also heard this referred to as rotten banana, 
which I, I don't think is accurate, but I would say that this is a butterscotch. It's beautiful, huge and chunky. This came out of a shop Goodwill lot. And then I have these guys as well. And these guys um, I did purchase from F Facebook Marketplace. So I was in Pennsylvania um, visiting some of my family over the summer and I just randomly, I don't shop on Facebook Marketplace too much. Like frankly, the whole like in-person thing kind of scares me. <laughs> I don't know if that's just me or if you, you know, tell me, like, does it freak you out a little bit? It definitely freaks me out. Um, but there was a girl on there and she was selling just a huge lot of Bakelite bracelets um, at a super, super cheap price. And so I met her at like the Piggly Wiggly <laughs> and got these from her. And the reason why I like these and why, you know, when you want to look at Bakelite, when you think about, you know, Bakelite's value, it's the um, intricately kind of carved Bakelite. So you could see here what people call deeply carved. If you look at listings um, for expensive, more expensive pieces of Bakelite. And, uh, you know, it, it often does de develop a patina. So you can see sometimes here, there's a little bit of brown, brown kind of in there. Um, again, we're looking at jewelry here that's really old at this point. Um, so yeah, I just love these. I think they're gorgeous. And this would be a cream spinach Bakelite in this lovely green. And I think, um, I think they look beautiful. I like to wear them. I wore them out to dinner recently and the, the dinner rest, the restaurant was like this very like tropical vibe. And so I fit right in. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love these gorgeous Bakelite pieces. I was happy to acquire this year. Just again, uh, chunky, chunky monkey here. Uh, I was, I went to this, uh, you know, Royal Street here in New Orleans is just filled with antique vendors and um, high-end, um, you know, vintage and antique stores. I went there, I was like, you know, we were closer to Christmas, I guess. And uh, we went and we had lunch at Antoine's, which is one of the oldest restaurants in New Orleans. It's something like 180 years old. And afterwards, I was like, let's go walk along Royal Street. And there's a store on Royal Street that has mountains of Bakelite. It's in the back of the store. Um, they had a bracelet like this listed for $1,200, uh, which I think is insane. And uh, to think, you know, I got this out of a shop Goodwill lot and I paid probably like probably less than a dollar for it. Just puts it into perspective, folks. It makes me, I will say it makes, has made me very spoiled when it comes to purchasing and enjoying jewelry. So um, I'm going to go, this is a fun one. This one actually also uh, came out of um, my local thrift store bag, a local thrift store jewelry bag. And so those bags, are, like I said, I think they're, they're $49. They used to be $39, you know, inflation. It's like hitting us everywhere. <laughs> um, but this, what we have here is a really stunning uh, antique butterscotch or egg yolk amber piece here. And it is set in, in what is all handmade setting and... Uh, in brutalist style. So I, I just love this. This egg yolk butter, this egg yolk amber is very valuable. This is amber in its natural form, usually from the Baltic, you know, region, also Russia. And it does have a 800 European fine silver mark on it and a hallmark. I believe that it was, it was Poland. So uh, the hallmark is right here on the hook. Uh, but I, and the chain is all handmade as well. I, I think this is just a stunning piece of jewelry in that it's all handmade. And again, I, I'm always shocked when I pull these types of jewelry items out of jewelry bags because first of all, like, why are people throwing this out? Firstly, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they just think, you know, this is eccentric auntie's like, you know, junky jewelry and they just throw it and donate it. I have no idea, but it's great because then we end up with it. People who have a real and true appreciation for jewelry. So you can see it's very sizable. Something like this, um, probably about $1,600 in value. Um, I've seen this, these brutalist handmade style uh, pieces go sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars. So uh, really fabulous there. I love this piece a lot. I, I just love natural amber. Um, when you like look in there, you see um, it's just like cloudy and it's it's not the prettiest. It really is not, which is why I think this brutalist style setting just goes with it so nicely. It really kind of plays up that organic feeling of the amber, and I'm sure that that's what the maker probably intended. So. Fabulous piece of jewelry. I love it so much. 
I have that one. And should we just keep going into, let's see, I'm going to go over here because this was a, I found this one maybe about a month or two ago and it was just so exciting to me. And I sometimes say I go to my local thrift store and I like to go, they have racks of jewelry out in the open that anyone can access. And then they have glass, you know, glass cases and you have to ask to see specific pieces of jewelry. Um, I have scored David Yerman jewelry on the rack. So I'd be like, cause they have a little plastic bin underneath the hooks and the jewelry falls in there. And I go digging through that too. I, I bought a, a David Yerman authentic David Yerman bracelet for $1.99 there. <laughs> so I am always make sure to go check what's over there. And so this was on the rack. This was hanging from a hook and I picked this up. This is so heavy. Um, it has to be like 150 grams or something like that. So heavy and the beads are huge. They have to be like 15, maybe 15, 18 millimeter size beads. Uh, I haven't measured them. I'm, you can see the price tag is still on here. So I, like I said, this is a recent find. Um, I'm looking at them and the, one of the indications to me, like when I look at things, I look for quality, hand carved gemstones, hand carved beads, that's usually a sign. That's usually a sign of quality and value. So, um, and you can see here, it has this sterling silver toggle clasp, also kind of looks like a little brutalist and it has this very interesting textured silver centerpiece a bead right here and this is also hand knotted and you can see that there is turquoise you know thread or silk in between to match the beads really look at the color of this turquoise this is natural turquoise and so what I have here is this is actually antique Chinese turquoise and um, it is quite valuable so something like this typically you will see go between 1500 and this would probably be on the higher end of that uh, to 2400 because of the size of the beads and also the quality of the turquoise and the fact that it's carved. That carving adds value. So I found this, you see this price tag on it, you guys? This was $5.99. This is insane. And it's just stunning. It looks stunning on it. It's like, you know, this is art. It is truly art. This is, you know, exceptional jewelry that this is why I love doing this because you're just, we're not gonna go to K Jewelers in the mall and find something like this. This is exceptional. So very super, super excited about this one. Again, I'm not quite, quite sure what I wanna do with it. Um, I have to figure it out a little bit more, but I'll get there eventually. I, we have nothing but time, nothing but time. Um, more turquoise here, and this we have is um, in Native American style, and this also came from my thrift store. I actually have the bag right here. This one I also paid $5.99 for, and when I purchased this, this um, there was two tur uh, turquoise necklaces, and um, for me, the giveaway on this was the color of the turquoise, but also the way that the strand is finished. Um, so these end caps here, these barrel end caps, very um, typical of styles, Native American jewelry making styles use this. They say sterling on them. I've seen these two with Navajo bench beads, bench beads being the sterling silver handmade beads uh, made by Navajo artists. And those are also very, very valuable. I also found a big strand of those this year, which I sold during Christmas timing. Um, and they were very long, they were 30 inches. Uh, so, you know, Native American jewelry, we, you know, you have to be out on the lookout for it. This was also on the rack hanging from a peg. Um, so yeah, this, there was this one plus another one. This one, I just, I love this turquoise. It is so yummy, this natural turquoise. These nuggets are spectacular. I love the fact that this is graduated. It is just a beautiful piece of jewelry. And so super happy to see that. You know, I do tend to, here in Louisiana, see a lot of Native American jewelry. And I, my theory is, is because we're next to Texas. <laughs> so um, you even see it in the pawn shops. I've talked to people who told me they've scored some really major Native American jewelry in the pawn shops. Uh, so I always, um, you know, tuned into that and like, you know, seeing if I can find that. And when I do, it, it just thrills me. So, you know what, let's put this over here just so we can look. And I will put the Chinese turquoise back over there. I'm trying to be like gentle with these pieces, but then I think about the fact that they were like probably manhandled in my thrift store. <laughs> and I'm like, are you know, do I need to be so gentle? I still will, because knowing me, I'll like drop it and crack it. <laughs> um, so I'll put all those fabulous pieces over there. We will put the egg yolk amber right there. 
And I have some fine um, jewelry items left that I'm gonna go through with you. This one, um, this is a, a more of a modern piece, but you can see here, this is a topaz. And uh, you know, topaz, a lot of people see this coloration and they're like, aquamarine. Aquamarine is a fine gemstone. It's right up there in the caliber of diamonds and sapphires. It's very expensive. Um, so typically you will not see an aquamarine gemstone of this size. So when you see something that's this and it's blue, um, you know, this to me looks like a Swiss blue topaz, uh, it's likely topaz. So this, this is not an antique. This is not, well, maybe it's considered vintage. It looks like it could be a, a 90s style, uh, but we have a five carat topaz, blue topaz here in the middle, um, surrounded by some diamond accents. Very pretty. This is a larger size. Um, I believe it's like a size eight or nine, but you can see this is a big bad boy. Um, it's beautiful. And this one also came out of my local thrift store jewelry bag. So um, that's a honker. And this one is in 14 karat gold, I believe. Yes, 14 karat gold. Um, I cleaned it up. That stone sparkles. It's fabulous. And we're trying to focus here. Ooh, what's going on? Excuse me, folks. Let's get focused. Too much junk. See, I put all this. I put all the stuff out. There we go. And now there's a. We're having focus problems. So yeah, this is a um, like more contemporary piece of jewelry. I currently have this listed on eBay. Um, I think for 450 something right along those lines. Uh, just because of the cost of gold currently is very high, and we do have, like I said, a very large sizable oval topaz. Um, and uh, it's about a, over five carats. So um, based on that is is how I price that one out. Um, but this one. Just a fabulous, always, I love, you know, the excitement of seeing fine jewelry in the jewelry bags is always exciting. So I have that one right there. Um, and the rest of these all came from jewelry bags. This one, uh, yesterday, I, well, this was a lot. This was a shop good, Goodwill lot find. This is a synthetic ruby ring. Let's get let's get focused here yeah, I just like my gear yeah, let's look at all the stuff and then it's like then we have focus issues let's see if this works no well there we go I think that's good right is that good we still a little like there we go that's crisp this is I am thinking this is art deco I haven't been able to dig into this too too much because like I said I only got this um, literally yesterday out of a shop Goodwill lot. We have a synthetic um, ruby in here. You know, synthetic rubies were invented in the late 1800s, became very popular in jewelry uh, manufacturing and, and jewelry making like early 1910s up and through Art Deco period. So I think what we have here is likely Art Deco and even till today, obviously, synthetic rubies are still utilized today. It is the exact same chemical process as a real corundum. And so therefore these, these rings will always test, the stones will always test as ruby if you test them on a presidium gem tester. Uh, but I don't care, I love them. I think they're beautiful. They also will fluoresce exactly like um, a real ruby. So like I said, all the, all the real properties of a ruby um, but synthetic. And uh, for me, what makes you kind of know that right away is always the color. They have kind of like a pink coloration to them. Um, so I don't know, I can spot a synthetic corundum pretty easily. Um, but I think this is a really adorable ring. It's 14 karat. Like I said, I believe this to be Art Deco. Um, I'll have to do more research on it. But the, the high um, setting, the six prong setting, very high. And then we have um, just the scroll work on the on the ring itself on the shank to me is looking very art deco so that's a very pretty little ring um likely a birthstone ring i'm thinking so yeah that's very beautiful so we got that guy yesterday out of a shop goodwill bag very nice um actually it came out of the same bag that the uh, gold necklace came out of so that was excellent um few more items here and then I'm going to wrap it up you guys because we're getting to the half hour mark but I don't know about you but I go with a good good jewelry all day long. Um, this is a beautiful uh, bar pin bar pin that came out of my local thrift store bag. Here we go again we're having the focus issues I'm going to put it in my hand and we can see <clears throat> we can see yeah 
So here we got um, a really beautiful 14 karat gold bar pin pe uh, brooch. And so um, what we're looking at here is probably Edwardian timing here. Um, and it has a very large uh, blue Ceylon sapphire center. And so uh, we're talking probably about a carat and a half on this stone here. And this was dirty and gross looking when I got it out of the bag, but I, I kind of knew just looking at the stone that I was dealing with a sapphire. And it did test, you know, obviously immediately tested on the Presidium as a sapphire. And um, Ceylon sapphires are known for having a blue purple coloration to them. And uh, another way to look at when you're thinking about Sapphires is um sapphires are included stones. So similar to a diamond, you will see like feather inclusions in a sapphire. So if you look at it under your loop, you look very, very close. Um, sometimes you'll see what look like feather wispies. And so that's how you'll too know that you have a, a, a natural stone on your hands. Um, so that's a beautiful little guy. It has the, the, the safety pin as well. And that did come out of my local thrift store jewelry bag. And I got two pieces left. I'm going to save the best for last. If you're still here, congratulations. You are my ride or die. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> um, here we have a piece of jewelry. Um, I think last year I had a smoky quartz ring as well. This one came um, from my local thrift store. This did not come out of a bag. This actually came out of the um, jewelry counter. And they, I think they did not realize that this was gold. It doesn't have a stamp on it. It's 14 karat gold. It's huge. So I paid $24 for this one. I paid up um, $24 for this one. And again, we're looking at probably like a five carat stone, um, maybe even larger on this one, maybe like a six carat. Um, you know, and uh, Smoky Topaz, not, you know, the most expensive stone. I would say it's probably like on the lower end. Um, when you think about value of, of stones, maybe along the lines of like an Iolite, I would say, comp, if you were to compare. But uh, this one, a little bit older, I'd probably place this one as a 1940s ring, just the way uh, the under gallery is, um, just, you know, how, how it's manufactured here. Uh, I have a similar ring. <clears throat> that was my grandmother's, and uh, the setting's very, very similar. And so that would put that timing in the right place. So uh, it's not reading as lovely, oh, there we go, on the um, camera as it actually is in real, real, because it's a, it is a fabulous kind of brown, see-through color, let's say. This one, I wanna say, is like a size five and a half. Yeah, it's almost reading like black on camera. It is not black, I assure you. It is definitely a, a beautiful, smoky brown. So, what if we back it up? You can see the light kind of come through there a little bit. So yeah, really lovely, big, you know, big and, lovely, big and chunky, and 14 karat gold. I will put that guy next to our little synthetic ruby. And the last one, you guys, is, saving the best for last, um, is this Platinum Tiffany's Etoile ring. And this guy came out of a thrift store jewelry bag. Uh, there's two locations in my thrift store. One's closer to my house, one's not. Um, I was, took a day off of vacation to go do what I like best, thrifting, <laughs> you know, and not on the weekend. So it's nice and relaxed. And I got this bag. And this bag actually was $39.99 and I, I came home, I was going through it and I saw this ring and uh, I saw that it said PLAT on it. I'm like, oh, it's plat this is platinum. And you could tell it had a really nice weight to it. And my husband was sitting next to me because he's on the, he was on the couch watching TV while I'm going through my jewelry bag. And I'm like, look, hon, I, I think I just found a platinum ring. Check it out. And he, he's looking at it and he goes, this is T and Co. I was like, wait, what a second? What, 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 what? <laughs> you know? So I took it out, I snatched it out of his hands. I took it back and I looked at it and sure enough, it is a Tiffany and Company's a 12 ring. So I had this authenticated and it, um, it is uh, got one third of a carat. It is Tiffany's and it is in platinum and it is currently still manufactured and the retail on this is about $1,900. Uh, so this one actually has not come off. It's, of course it's my size. Um, it has not come off my finger since I found it. <laughs> So I wear this kind of like with my engagement ring. It looks fabulous. I love it so much. And I think, you know, it's just exciting because, you know, I've never been like a Tiffany's girl. I've never been that type of gal um, because I've always been someone who's had an eye towards thrift. You know what I mean? And 
Tiffany marks up their diamonds. Like what you're paying for when you buy from Tiffany's is the name, you know, because you can certainly get way larger diamonds and, you know, much bigger, bolder jewelry for a lot less from, you know, other manufacturers, but you're, you're definitely paying for that blue box and you're paying for that Tiffany's name. So, um, you know, like I said, <clears throat> I was not something I would actively proactively go and purchase, but I'll take it in a thrift store bag for $39.99. Absolute, absolutely, positively. Um, so anyway, you guys, that's everything. These are my favoriteest, fabulous finds for the year. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, give me a like on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys at my next video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.